um, production. So right here, this is a list of all of our factories. This shows how much they are producing and what they're producing every single day. So right now we've got a small arms factory, a paper factory, ammunition, glass, fabric, explosives, and an artillery factory. And right down here, this shows what they need to actually produce the resources. And this also shows how much um, profit they're gaining each month or how much they're losing. If they start losing, this will turn to red and the arrow will go in a uh, downslope diagonal. Now, if I need to, guys, one of the things I can do to save my factories, to so save my factories are kind of going down to the dump, I can actually subsidize them, which, for everyone who may know what subsidize, who, you, everyone should know what subsidizing is, but for those of you guys who don't, whenever a government subsidizes something, they handle a certain part of the costs. So say, like, my ammunition factory is dropping and it's starting to lay off its workers, which can not happen, I can subsidize it to try to bring it back out of its poor economic state and I'll pay for their worker salaries while they try to get their um, trade and their business back up. So it's kind of an interesting way to save your country, your um, places if you need to. Foreign investment, I don't do this too much so we won't really go into this for the time being. Production, this just displays what we're producing in our country, how much, and it shows what who is producing them. So right now you guys can see all of my artisans are producing my cement and my steel and my clipper convoys, which clipper convoys are used to uh, maintain my ships. But over here we've got machine, excuse me, we've got glass which is actually being produced by a few of our factories which is represented by this. These things that are out, that are grayed out or in red means that we're not producing them at all. Which means we probably don't have access to the resources or we just can't build them yet. Such as we can't build tanks, we can't build planes yet because we don't know how to do that. And then over here this shows our current projects. If I want to, so right now this shows the amount of capitalists that are investing in this project. So they're probably going to build a liquor distillery soon, which is going to get liquor for our country. And this shows what it needs, what resources it needs to actually build it. And if we don't have the available resources in our country, what the investors will do is they'll go out and buy them from the world market. But one thing I can do if I want to, which you guys will see me do a lot because I do do this, is I can actually invest into this project. So if I hold control, and I click on this, I'm going to invest the max amount so they can just pay for all these resources and then the investors will build the liquor distillery much quicker. So that's pretty much how this screen works. And then we've got our budget screen. This is one that I'll be spending a lot of time on. Budget is very important. I mean, it's basically, in a nutshell, it's the budget of your economy. What you guys will be seeing me do a lot is that I'll be shifting my taxes up and down. A lot of times I tax my poor classes a lot, which is really counterintuitive because you get the most amount of money from your poor taxes because they are they make up the largest portion of your economy and they actually can suffer the most. They can actually, excuse me, they can sustain the most under high taxes because if you push your taxes up to past a certain amount, what will actually happen is that your farm, your different um, levels of society, your poor, your middle class, and your rich class, they won't be able to get what they need to. Right now, this little red thing right here that says that 36% of my middle class are not getting their needs. That means that at this current time, none of them are getting their needs, and they're actually they're technically starving. And 25% are getting their life needs. That means that they're able to get by, they can pay for food, and 39% are getting their everyday needs, which means that they can get a little bit more, you know, get some tea maybe like a luxury chair every once in a while, things like that. So raising taxes a lot will actually hurt your economy in the long run because it'll make it so your people cannot actually afford many things. But you guys will see me going back and forth in this a lot. Um, over here, this is our list of daily expenses. We've got our industrial subsidies. So this is how much we'll be, I'll be, um, money I'll be losing from industrial subsidizing. Our national stockpile is mainly used to um, pay our army. So if I my national stockpile is at 100%, this means that our armies will be supplying, will be getting their supplies at the maximum portion. Now what this does though is that national stockpile, especially during war, is very expensive because you need to buy any um, any equipment and any food and sources that you need and supplies that you need for your soldiers and just your um, navies, especially during wartime that you need, you actually have to pay for. So. National stockpile is something that fluctuates that I won't be moving around too much, but it does control the supplies of my troops and the morale. Over here is education. Moving this up will make it so I, uh, more people are tempted to become clergymen, and also it'll increase the literacy rate of my the literacy rate um, increase of my population. As I said, administration. This is a measure of our bureaucrats. Um, raising this will increase our overall tax efficiency, which will give me a little bit more money, and it'll also make it so crime, uh, so that I can reduce crime and to have better crime affecting fighting abilities. And then over here we've got social spending, which right now we don't have any, but if we ever get social reforms, such as unemployment subsidies, pensions, 13-hour workdays, things like that, 
this is where we're going to be spending money into these. So like if we ever do poor relief, that'll go into a social spending. So we won't see that any time for right now. And then over here, this is our military spending. This is just how much money is being paid towards our soldiers and officers. Raising this will make it so more people will want to be soldiers because they get higher pay. And lowering it will make people um, want, not want to be soldiers. So that actually will adversely affect the amount of soldiers that can support. Then over here, this is technology. This is the most important screen. Well, one of the most important screens, I would say, in the game. So technologies in this game, like I said, how it works is that you put a certain amount of research points. I think it's daily. Yeah. You put a certain amount of daily research points inside whatever technology you're researching. So say I want to research experimental railroad. I hit start research, and every um, couple days, what will happen is that my country will be putting in resources. Um, we'll be putting in research points towards this, and once it's done researching it, it'll then unlock the next tech, assuming that it has an activation year of what we're at. Right now, if I finish researching Experimental Railroad, it'll be done in February of 1837, which is next year. And if you guys take a look, Early Railroad, I actually won't be able to get it right now, because the activation year is that, not until 1840. So it actually will restrict you in some ways, because it will actually make it so only certain technologies can be bought early games, so one nation doesn't get too far ahead of the other. But you kind of have to mix and match. Now some um, some of these actually, these technologies, they have these things called inventions, which when you research a technology, so say I want to go with interchangeable parts, so change it to that. What it allows me to do is that once I research interchangeable parts, there's a certain percentage each month where I may um, discover these different inventions. So we've got precision work, where if I discover this, it'll increase my ammuni ammunition and glass production output by 10%. And it will also um, activate machine parts, which means that's another resource I can get. And then we've got machine tools over here, things like that. If I go for medicine, I might have a chance to get combat medicine, which will decrease my army attrition, um, give me military hospitals, allow for vaccination, chemotherapy, things like that. So really picking your technology is very important with based on how you want to play. So, and then let's move on to the politics screen. So this is all the information about our political reform, excuse me, about our politics, guys. Right now, I start off as a conservative government, which right here it's listed about what I can do. So what a conservative government does is that it restricts me so I can't build factories, but I can have capitalists build them if I want, and I can also build railroads. And then in this list, all of our different policies individually for each type of our, uh, each part of our government. So right now we've got protectionist trade economy, which you guys can see in, um increases my maximum tariff but lowers my minimum tariff so it makes it so I can raise the tariff if I want to. Interventionism means that I can actually intervene in the economy when I need to but people have free reigns. So it's kind of like a mix of free market and um, state economy. We've got moralism. This is saying that the church and state are one body so um, basically we've got no separation of church and state right now. We've got residency which means that only people of my primary culture which is listed whenever I click on a country, it'll show me the culture right here. So right now, Poston, we've got 84% North German and 15% Polish. So this is saying right now that only 80 of my North German people can actually vote if they want to. And then we've also got our war policy, which is right now is jingoism, where the military is the centerpiece of the state and military spending is prioritized. Um, and then our other important parts of the government is that we've got our voter ideologies here, which tells us what our current people think of each political party. We've got conservative, we've got reactionary, which is basically people who want to go back in time to olden days, while conservatives, they still want to move forward, but they want to keep everything under kind of lock and key. And we've also got liberals, which are pretty self-explanatory. Over here, these are our social reforms, which as I listed, once I enact some of these social reforms, I will have to pay for them if I want to. Um, to enact social and political reforms, we actually have to get a certain amount of our upper house to be in favor of them, which happens over time if you have a liberal upper house, but um, we'll be seeing that more later in the game. And then over here in political reforms, we've got, do we want to outlaw slavery? We've got our upper house right now, which is appointed, our voting franchise, if our people can vote or not, which it, right now we don't because we have an absolute monarchy, the voting system, can people have public meetings, press rights, trade unions, things like that. This is also a list of movements. If we ever have st um, rebels that start cropping up in our territory, they'll appear over here. And if we ever have movements, like you can actually have people create movements for suffrage. You can have like a universal suffrage movement where certain amounts of people will start joining this movement and protesting that they want universal suffrage. That's what um, the suppression points are used for. If I think a movement's getting too strong, I can just suppress it, assuming I have enough suppression points. Then over here, these are our decisions. These are what's going to kind of guide how I play the game, because decisions 
are very important in this game. So right now we've got Restore the Acad uh, Academia, which um, restores the old style of teaching, but we're not going to do that. We've got an option to build the Suez Canal, because I'm a great power. We have Von Moltkit Reforms. If I invent army decision making right now, this will give me an extra bonus, which will be Prussian General Staff. We've got Encourage the Roar Boom, which will give us industrial power. The, and we've also got the decision for forming the North German Confederation, which is what we'll be first going to, so this is going to really guide how we play. We've also got three hurrahs for Germany. Each of these decisions have certain set parameters that I have to meet. So like with the North German Confederation, all the core provinces that are of my culture have to be in my either in my sphere or under my control. Once I do that, I can form the North German Confederation, and then eventually we can move on to taking over Germany. Um, and besides that, that's all with that. Over here, also, this is our national focus. The national focus, what it does, is in our technolo in our um, different provinces, we will gain people over time, but we can actually make it so we can focus on a certain thing. So say I want to go to my main, my highest populated province right here, which is... Uh, I'm not going to butcher these names, just listen. I'll have to look these up later. <clears throat> we can actually promote a certain type of population. So say I want more soldiers in this territory, I can click Encourage Soldiers, and what that'll do is it'll make the encouragement for soldiers 10% increase, increased. So we'll have a higher chance of getting soldiers in this place. So say I'm about to go to war and I need more people in my nation that are fighters. I can do that and that'll give me an easy way. I can also influence production and party loyalty if I need to. Um, and then besides that, I think that's pretty much it. We'll go over in military over here. This just lists our create general and our create admirals. So admirals and generals obviously lead our armies. We can build our armies over here. This is just our list of different types of units. Um, over here, this is our list of war exhaustion. War exhaustion is gained over time during wars, and as it goes up, it actually makes your people unhappy with you and increases their militancy. This shows our supply consumption, our organization regain. The higher organization, the higher the more organized one of your units are, the better fighting ability they have and the higher morale they have, so that's very important. Um, we have a recruitment time, a unit start experience, the digging cap, which is basically how much can a unit dig into the ground, which as we go up in technologies towards the World War I era, obviously the digging cap will be very, very high because we have trench warfare. So. I think that's pretty much it, so um, if you guys have any other further questions, post them in the comments below, and I'll be looking forward to starting this campaign with you guys later tonight or tomorrow. So, hope you guys enjoyed this introductory video, 